Jesus is my rock. That's how I roll. Welcome to another episode of California Preaching. Guys, it's my friend's birthday today. His name is Bill, not my Bill, another Bill. I'm making him my famous three berry pie. So I've got the berries, I've got the pie. I'm gonna turn the oven on preheat and we're gonna get started and I'm gonna talk to you about some really important stuff while I'm baking. I'm preheating to 350. The berries are pretty much defrosted, so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and rip them open and we're going to put them in a big, big bowl. I'm making two pies, so I need to be a little aggressive here with the berries. So I decided to do three bags, make sure you're using more berries than less. So because they still have a little frost on them, I am definitely going to put them over some heat. This is definitely not going to be a pie making video, so please stick with me. Uh, I just, I got two nine inch organic traditional pie shells, which I'm going to use. I'm gonna fill them with the berries and then I'm going to use just regular Pillsbury roll on top, you know, I'm cheating a little bit. I am going to put some agave in here. I do not like things to be too sweet, but I also don't like things to be too tart. Fill the pie shells. This is my favorite part. I don't know, there's something so satisfying about it. And then I just pinch, pinch, pinch. Ain't that pretty? I just take my scissors and I cut, voila. Roll it into a little ball. Okay, finish the decoration. Now, I just gotta put a little bit of olive oil over the top of each pie. It just makes it a little crunchier. I'm gonna set my timer for 45 minutes. I think they should be about perfect in 45 minutes. So guys, we are due for a major catch up. Oh gosh, okay, so Pokey passed. I was in the hospital. Now, Billy and I are sort of in a little bit of a conundrum about what to do in terms of our living situation. We absolutely adore this apartment and we're so grateful and we're happy to be here. But is it a long-term situation? Probably not. You know, I love living in uh, New York. I'm loving it. I'm so happy to be back. You know, it's a gigantic decision and I'm not sure what we're going to do here. But what it does bring up for me is that feeling of instability that I had when I was a youngster. And I do not like that feeling. I like predictability. I like to know what the plan is. And just not knowing what the plan is, is creating some free floating anxiety for me. There's a quote that was brought to my attention the other day. I loved it so much. And it was something like, um, there's a reason why the windshield of a car is so much bigger than the rear view mirror and that's because where you're going is way more important than where you've been. There is something to be said about just surrendering to today and knowing that, you know, everything is kind of one day at a time anyway because nothing is really set in stone. It's kind of all an illusion when we think we're in control. I'm doing my very best to live a surrendered life to Jesus and to trust in his plan. But this is my new favorite shirt on my website. This is the Jesus Influencer shirt. And I'm really sorry, you can only get my shirts right now through PayPal. I'm having a really big issue with the company that I work with. So we're just trying to figure that out. But anywho, I wanna try and remind myself that, you know, life is pretty simple. Life can be pretty simple and life is pretty simple. Smile and praise and worship Jesus. I mean, is there really any more to life? I've got a roof over my head. I've got food to eat. I've got people that love me and that I love. I've got Jesus Christ as my God, my Lord, but I am breaking into flop sweats four times a night. Yeah, that's all starting. The hormones, you know, I thought maybe I bypassed the whole flop sweat thing, but apparently not. Now I gotta take a little estrogen cream, little click cream uh, once or twice a day. I spoke to my hormone doctor today, so that's happening. I learned recently that you can have faith and you can have control, but you can't have both. So I'm really just trying right now to let go of the control and just take a swan dive into my faith forwarding all issues to heaven. It's not so easy, but the alternative is much harder. I had to switch rooms. Also, Billy and I have been mm, struggling a little bit. There's been a lot of stress in our lives. There's just been a lot going on over the past 
few years, we are struggling to be in sync. I sometimes feel like, you know, we're taking two steps forward and one step, one step back. I'm really invested in our relationship propelling forward um, and having Christ at the center of our relationship, which Billy's into, I'm not really forcing it, but I think obviously I'm a little bit more Jesus focused. He's very much into the idea of praying together and even going to church, uh, which is beautiful and so lovely. Both of us struggle with saying, I'm sorry. Um, and I think that it's such a beautiful trait to be able to say, I'm sorry, even if you're not fully taking ownership for everything that you guys are arguing over, but clearly there's been a misunderstanding. So wouldn't it be nice if I could just say, I'm sorry, sweetie, that we're arguing right now. I don't want to fight with you. And then still try and get my point across somehow, but like in a really loving, <laughs> gentle way. Your ego is not your amigo. There's very few times that I actually feel like I'm wrong. I'm being honest. And I know Billy feels the same way. He admits that to me. He's like, I've done nothing wrong. Why would I apologize? <laughs> it's like, I feel the same way. Is it that I didn't grow up with siblings and so I don't really know how to apologize? Is it that Billy grew up with so many siblings and it would have been difficult for him to humble himself enough to admit that he was wrong? I really wanna work on it, but it does feel like Billy and I have a tough time getting back to our happy place if we don't apologize to each other. If there's not that moment of recognizing that we haven't been in a great place and that we both desire to get to a better place. And if we both take a moment to build that bridge, that's when the healing happens. If I could say to Billy, sweetie, obviously we're not in the best place. Let's pray. You wanna pray? I think it would really soften the edges of our marriage. I know where we could be. And so that's what makes it so frustrating. And I don't know if it's just the devil on in overdrive, just trying to create chaos and problems in our relationship? Or is it me finally being in a place where I'm able to speak up for myself and so I'm not sweeping as many things underneath the rug and I'm able to voice what's going on in my heart and in my mind. For any of you who are in long-term relationships or if you're planning on being in one, just know that you gotta clean up your messes along the way. Don't, don't sweep things under the rug. I'm telling you right now, it is a recipe for disaster. You want to build strong communication skills early on in your relationship. Change of scenery yet again. I would just say for anybody who's struggling in their relationship, follow the peace. Anytime that I have a decision to make about whether I should confront my partner on something or whether I should let it go, follow the peace and that's not always so easy but sometimes it's better to just go to the lord go to a girlfriend write in my journal instead of actually like i didn't like when you said that and i'm having issues and i don't you know just like the whole thing with the complaining and the arguing and the the pettiness of it life is too short one day i'm gonna be dead in a box well, I'm being cremated, but still. And remember, Billy's human, I'm human. You know, we are sinners saved by grace. I'm in a relationship with a man who loves me and is committed to me. I'm in a relationship with a man who's a great father, hard worker, uh, funny, very supportive of my career. What more do I want? I'm wanting to be seen by my husband, which is all important and great. But ultimately, it's Jesus that I want to be seeing me. Jesus, 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 all the way home, you guys. Like I've said a zillion times, Jesus is the source. Everything else is a resource. I don't know if you've ever heard the expression live and let live, but I used to be in AA and they talked a lot about that um, living and, and I never really understood what it meant but then I read somewhere, be your own project. And I was like, oh, 
I'm my own project and I've got to live and let live. Like my husband's his own project. All I can do is pray for him. If he's going to have revelations, if he's going to have these huge epiphanies in his life, it's not going to be because I'm choosing to argue with him. That's not going to be why Billy has major turnarounds and changes in his life. It's not going to be because I'm choosing to pick a fight. We have a choice to say it or not say it. Say it or don't say it. And 99% of the time, it's best to not say it. Don't say it. Just don't say it. Pray it. <laughs> don't say it. Pray it. It's time to check on my uka laka laka usha la la barka ta 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 pai. Holy Spirit, activate. Holy Spirit, activate. I am telling you, these pies are a hit at any party, any family gathering. I had to make my delightful whipped cream, which I just put in my Nutribullet with a tiny bit of agave. That's it. Okay, I'm on my way to the party and I've got the goods and my goal is to be nice. I just pray that you will help me be a joy to be around. You know the quote, be the change that you wanna see in the world. That's what I'm gonna do when I go to this party. I'm gonna be the change that people want to see, that I want to see in this world. I got the Lord on board, so I think I'm okay. Oh, I'm so excited. This is really gonna help contribute to my kindness and sweetness. I'm home. Oh, how apropos. The pie paintings. Oh, hi, cow preachers. <laughs> um, I love your girl. Ooh, appetizers. And who we got over there? Uh-huh. Honey. I love you. I need paper towels I spilled in the car. Finding it hard to be nice. Lord come through for me. Oh my goodness. <gasps> no. Seriously, what was I thinking? <gasps> oh my gravy, get Jesus on the phone. Hi, babe. We're so happy you're out and hanging out with us. <laughs> Little space kitty. The sort of recap here is it's really nice to hear. You know what? I can totally understand how that would have made you feel that way. And I'm sorry about that. And so you're not necessarily apologizing for what you think you didn't do wrong. Mm -hmm. It's just acknowledging that, huh, I can understand how that might make her feel that way. Yeah, that's very good. That's excellent. I agree with you. So the long and short of it is that you could be in a disagreement and not feel like you did something wrong, but you're apologizing because you could see how in the mind and heart of your partner, yes. Uh, they that's how they perceived it and it made them feel bad and you're apologizing because that's how it made them feel. What is it if I were to say to you, write the script for me, okay? And then we'll flip the script and I'll say it. Chai, I can, I, now that I think about it, I can totally understand how my choices made you feel that way. Chai, in retrospect now, I get it. I totally understand how the things that I said and I did, my choices, made you feel that way, made you feel bad. Now what do you need to do? Nothing, I don't need to hear anything. I would appreciate if you would say that Bill. Bill. You were wrong. You were wrong. In the way this whole thing went down. In the way this whole thing went down. About 10%. About 10%. And I, China Phillips. And I, China Phillips. Was about 90% responsible for what went wrong. Was about 90% responsible for what went wrong. So in the context of that 90 to 10 ratio. So in the context of that 90 to 10 ratio. I would like to apologize sincerely. I would like to apologize sincerely. Body, heart, and mind. <laughs> heart and mind. Yeah for my 90% of the responsibility of how things went off the rails. For my 90% responsibility for how things went off the rails. Oh, that made me feel so good. Will you forgive me? <laughs> You're forgiven, I love you so much. Thank you, Brad, thank you. <laughs> love you, Chad. <laughs> I do love you, and peace. Uh, Christ. <laughs> we love you too. Bye. Now it's time to say goodbye, goodbye to all our Catholic friends. Hi, my 
eternal friends. I pray you liked that video. And if you did, I pray that you will share it, give it a thumbs up, and maybe even subscribe. Uh, but even more importantly, I want to tell you about California Healing. California Healing is a live Zoom call that takes place every single Thursday. We meet from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and then from 12.30 to 2.30 Eastern. We have 16 spots left, you guys. If you sign up between April and May, you will receive a free t-shirt off my website. This is one of my favorites, the Jesus Influencer shirt. And I would love to give you a CD called China and Vaughn. It's a Christian CD that I made many moons ago, but it's very Holy Spirit activated music. I think you'll love it. And of course, it will be autographed. I pray that you'll check it out. It's really an incredible group of ladies. We worship, we pray, we take communion, we have a bionic Bible study, we have share time, and then we have a WhatsApp thread throughout the week that we all keep in touch with. So it is a really, really fantastic group of ladies, and I would love to see you there. The link to sign up for California Healing Revelation is right here in the description. Peace of Christ.